In the last session, we built this smart card together, which responded perfectly to its internal content. But today, we are going to take it to the next level and learn how we can make this card fully responsive. We'll make it so it has a beautiful horizontal layout in larger space. And as the space shrinks, it automatically transforms into a vertical card. Hello friends, welcome to the XGen Academy channel. As you saw, our card doesn't have a fully responsive behavior just yet. Let's make it fully responsive together in a few simple steps. The first step is uh, to select the main card frame and change its direction from vertical to horizontal. And okay, everything is a mess, but don't worry. That's completely normal. We did this so we could get access to a magic feature called wrap. In fact, by changing the direction from uh, vertical to horizontal, its icon appeared here, wrap. But what is wrap? Imagine you are typing in Word. When you reach the end of the line, the next word, instead of going off the page, automatically breaks into the next line. Wrap feature does exactly that. By enabling it, actually we are telling to Figma, arrange items next together and if there is no more space, move the last one to the next line. Let's enable it and see what happens. Okay, I enable it, but uh, you can see that as we shrink actually the frame, our elements get squashed without any limits. Do you see it? Why? because the width is set to fill. If I click on one of these child, you can see the width set fill, fill container. So its behavior makes sense. And same for this one, as you can see. This behavior is correct up to a point, but every element has a breaking point. And there is where Mimwitz comes into play. For the content block, we can define a minimum width from here. If I click on add meme width, a field appears here and I can set a value for meme width. I set for example 240 pixel for that and when I set that two red lines appeared on the left and right sides meaning that the width of this block cannot be reduced below this limit. Now let's continue. We will do the same for the image. As you can see, so they have the same size. I set it to 140. Check it out. Now, when you shrink the frame, both elements get smaller down to 240 pixels and then stop. And when it gets smaller, this amount, the magic happens. But how much exactly? Six pixels for the padding right. 240 pixels for the minimum width of the image, 4 pixels for the gapping between the elements, again 240 pixels for the content block, and the last one 6 pixels for the padding left. If you sum up all these numbers together, you get the minimum horizontal space the frame needs for the elements to sit side by side. So we calculating the breaking point for this card. Let's check it. When the card's width uh, gets less than 496, there is no longer enough space for the horizontal layout. And yes, the second element automatically moves to the next row. And since its width sets uh, to fill, it fills entire space. And actually, it is the magic of wrap. And as you see, when we shrink the card, the content work properly, but the card, no. To prevent the card itself from getting too small, uh, we will also define a mean width for the card. So I select the card and set a mean width for that. For example, 264, it can be good. And yes, when we Showing that it works properly too. And what about the max width? It has no limit for the max width and it's not good. 
as you can see it needs a limit so to stop it from getting overlay stretched on a very large screen we will set a max width for it as well from here again i open width setting and select add max width we see that another field has appeared this time for setting max widths i set 600 for example for that it can be good and yes and now we can say our card has a controlled responsive behavior like this but if we want to make our design pixel perfect we can apply this same logic to the action bar i'll go through the steps very quickly it has to have horizontal layout which is already is enable wrap and i set the buttons width to fill width and i set the horizontal gap to 40 pixels instead of auto and set the vertical gaps to 8 pixels for when it wraps to vertical layout and the last step set the minimum width for the button i set for example 94 pixel it can be good you can see the red lines for the mean width for this button okay now let's take a look at its behavior and functionality oh do you see see that and after this breakpoint we have it like this till here and if i increase the width very slowly you can see the behavior of the elements very well till here all right our responsive card is fully ready and now looks great in any space and a screen size but now an important question what if you want to use 100 of these cards on a user list page let's say i copy from this card and use it but if we decide to change follow button color or round the cards corner later do we have to repeat that action 100 times absolutely not this is where the most powerful concept for design system comes into play components in the next session we'll start our journey into the world of component creation and learn how to build a master component so that when you change it all its copies update simultaneously if you want to make your design truly professional and scalable you absolutely cannot miss our next session and you know we need your full support to continue these tutorials thank you so much for liking and subscribing and be sure to hit the notification bells so you don't miss the rest of this journey see you soon